Welcome to Hobby Clubhouse, with a look at this really old Gundam magazine I've had since I was really small. This here is an unlicensed publication calling itself the Great BB Senshi SD Gundam Picture Guide, and well, it's some of those things. You see, while all the photos in here were likely used without permission from some other Japanese publication or, you know, multiples of them, the text inside isn't much of a guide and it's riddled with conjecture and factual errors, you know, it's not to say that this book is pointless, and we're really not here to laugh at the book today. Quite the contrary, this weird book contains a number of kits that have been largely forgotten or some that were even unreleased prototypes, so it's really worth us taking a look. And with the release of SD Gundam World Heroes, I think it's a good time for us to take a look at some classic SD Gundam history from this book. Okay, so here's what I do know about the book. It was published sometime in 1991 for sure, but not before July of that year, and I'll tell you why when we get to it. It was sold for 40 Hong Kong dollars, and it was published by Vincent Press, which has an address and everything. Now, publishers in Hong Kong in the 90s routinely did license infringing things because companies in Japan had no actual presence here, so there was no one to go after the books legally. And first, let's have a look at what the cover has to tell us. First, with this corner right here with an adorable little coupon for 20 Hong Kong dollars, and most likely this is an actual coupon. I know this store actually existed before, and the book gives you an address to go there and everything. So you kind of get a 50% rebate right off the bat from the book itself, and it gives you an excuse to buy more models. Here it says that there's a lineup of the newest F91 kits, which is how I was able to tell the year this book was released. But otherwise, the cover is a composite of different images taken here and there and put together with early 90s computer editing. We will be going through the entire book, so pour yourself a nice drink and come see all of what's inside this book together with me. So on the very first page, we have a generous shot of the BB Senshi F91 that's haphazardly mirrored. So that's our first hint that the people putting this book together didn't have any kind of oversight from Bandai or Sunrise. It's actually a bit rare that we get to see such a large photo of a painted build because you can actually see all the small imperfections on the paint job. I mean, heck, even the blade antennas use just the stock stickers right here. It's really quite charming if you think about it, and all this will be consistent characteristics of the kits that they paint themselves throughout the book. Next here we have a table of contents and the publication details that we've seen a bit already, and from here we know we have 74 pages of vintage Gundam goodness to look forward to. It also says here that the $20 coupon is only good with a $100 purchase, but I don't think any kid is against having a minimum spending at a model store. To start us off, we get a written introduction to the SD Gundam world titled The New Wave in Gundam, SD Gundam. This is the most writing you'll see them do in the entire book all in one go, and they never write this much again all at once, but let's see what they have to say. SD Gundam can be considered a continuation of the Gundam series. What's different from other Gundam works is that SD Gundam is not widely seen on TV by everyone but rather, it's seen in limited releases via OVA videotapes and comics. Strangely, SD Gundam is widely popular among younger fans, and this has given rise to a trend of SD Gundam models. So they're not wrong here, they're talking about the big SD Gundam boom that happened throughout the later half of the 80s, which extended right through much of the 90s. Bandai has produced a series of SD Gundam models including SD Sengokuden, G-Arms, and the Knights of the Round Table and their popularity has surpassed even that of full-size Gundam models. And this too is true. For a good while, SD Gundam kits were a mainstream product because the market for younger fans is always going to be bigger than that of the enthusiasts, even with people like me who buy like two or three of the same model. The popularity is largely due to SD Gundam's humorous stories that appeal to all ages. And the characters within the stories are ones that everyone know, so they're familiar and appealing. For example, in SD Sengokuden, we have Musha Gundam, the RX-78, Mark II, Zeta, Double Zeta, Nu as the core character in the narrative. Even in historical outfits, people still love them. Now this part here seems like this person's casual opinion more than factual analysis. I mean, it's not untrue, but there is much, much more to it than that. But I think this book is meant for children, so I don't know why I'm picking on it. Because SD Gundams are easy to build and come in a large variety, they're especially appealing to younger Gundam fans, so it's no surprise SD Gundam is becoming more popular all the time. 
to help all our readers get to know SD Gundam better. This book has gathered information from many different sources into this special book on Gundam. We hope this will help everyone gain a deeper understanding of SD Gundam models. Oh, all right, I'm ready to learn whoever you are, this writer from 1991. I bet you didn't think your writing would be immortalized on YouTube one day, did you? So, we start off with a story from SD Sengokuden, the feudal Japan theme of SD Gundam. And right off the bat, holy cow, I have to talk about this big castle in the background here. This is a real product you can buy. This is the Ganso SD Gundam Shinsei Gundam Jo Tenchi Jo. So bear with me here because this thing is gonna be really cool. This is the biggest kit released in the entire Ganso line by volume. And I'll put a link down in the description to a really cool page that documents this kit really extensively. But get this, if you were a kid in 2003 and remember SD Gundam Force, those crazy people at Bandai that made that toy line actually considered renewing this thing for a new toy. I mean, look at this, holy nuts. So this here, this isn't just background dressing. This thing here is an icon, but all the kids in front are BB Senshi and they do play a part in the coming story. So our tale starts off with Yami Shogun, this guy right here, brought back from the dead by the three elders of the Zaku clan. Azaku 1, Azaku 2, and Azaku 3. And keep in mind that you can actually buy all these guys in the BB Senshi line, so this isn't some Hobby Japan custom build voodoo. The Great Shogun asks Psycho Mark II to pass him his sword that can banish the evil of Yami Shogun. And Yami Shogun is indeed no match for the Great Shogun. They call upon Alex, and yes, this guy here is supposed to be the NT1, and he is the main character of this story. He was raised by the second in command here from a child, and yes, this Chobum armor baby stroller and the baby is a BB Senshi kit that you can buy. So the Gundam army go for an all out attack on the Dark Emperor, with the Great Shogun turning into his Super Phoenix form. And his army used their strongest combined attack, the Hako no Shin. Alex is seen here in the final moments as the two sides collide, and with a loud bang, he wakes up in a strange land all by himself. So what happened here is that the Gundam army is actually no match for the Dark Emperor. Imagine that, they lost. And Alex is tossed two generations into the past and he loses his armor and he looks like this right here. And from this point, he will gain the Earth armor, this handsome green thing right here. And he will assist the Phoenix Gundam in his rise to become a great Shogun. And in the end, Alex himself becomes the fourth great shogun. And with the power of time travel, he brings back two other great shoguns and travels back to that moment of impact to pull a safe scum and join the third great shogun here to cheat the Dark Emperor out of his amazing victory. So who says good guys always fight fair? And here's a closer look at the third great shogun who we saw earlier in the big fight. All Gundam Shoguns have a Phoenix mode, and they're actually pretty ornate, which obviously you have to paint to see on any of the kits. And here we have the second great Shogun, who didn't take part in the story bits we mentioned just now, except for that cheat fight in the end that I just mentioned. So this Shogun here has fought the Dark Emperor before, so Dark Emperor has been around for a while. In fact, remember Phoenix Gundam? In the timeline, without Alex coming back to the past, the Dark Emperor outright kills him, even at his strongest when he is in his great Shogun form, so the Dark Emperor has literally been killing it for generations. Next here, we have the Deputy General, which we saw earlier, you know, the adoptive father of Alex and all. In his younger years, he was the normal Gundam. His name is an Ateji, which is sort of like a pun and it's really lost to us in English. Anyway, if you bought this kit of him, you get this really cool alternate form where he used to also be a ninja. Now tell me you don't want that at least a little when you see it. And here we have what's roughly like a chancellor or advisor of sorts. This guy here is Zeta Gundam who rose into that role. And then the previous generation who used to be in that same role was someone based off the perfect Gundam. Then here we have the Musha Plus, whose beam smart gun will clue you in that this guy here is the Zeta Plus C1. Next we have Musha Hyakushiki Kai, whose name is pretty self-explanatory. He has a Mega Bazooka Launcher gimmick, even though that's not a Hyakushiki Kai thing. You know, don't question it, just go with it. It makes good toys. Down here we have Musha S, so Superior Gundam. Then we have Musha Psycho Mark II, who has an evil brainwash form to fit the motif of the original MS with Rosamia and all. 
Then we have Musha Zazabi, who doesn't really play a big role even though the base MS is super famous. Then we have the Yami Shogun, who needs parts included with several other kits for you to complete this final form. Next here we have the Waka Zakuto, or Young Zakuto, so he is the son of the older Zakuto, who was recently a guest in my SD Gundam World Heroes video. So this guy brought his dad back to life only to get him killed a second time. Next we have the Musha Kamefer, who is a ninja and looks like it. And then we have Musha the O, who somehow is the leader of the big ninja army. He's big, but he's no ninja. And next here we have the four Superstar Gundams, the Mark II of the Forest, Double Zeta of the Flames, Psycho of the Great Mountains, and Nu of the Wind. Now I know they look nothing like the base Gundams because they were actually carried forward from the previous stories and they all got these upgraded armor sets. And in the corner here we have a commemorative pair for the Heaven and Earth movie about Takeda Shingen's rivalry against Usagi Kenshi. Shingen is played by the RX-78 here, and Kenshin is played by the Zeta Gundam, and no, you don't actually get the diorama here, you have to buy the two kits on their own. So next up, we're back to the charming kits painted by the magazine folks themselves, which is kind of obvious right here. This Musha Zeta, who is the Chancellor we saw earlier in his younger years, and doesn't really have much to do with the stories we just saw, so he's just kind of random here. They use all the stickers on the kit, so you get an idea of what you get inside the box. Down here is the only representation we'll see from the military-themed G-Arms line with the V-Command Gundam, and he's actually quite nicely painted. His support unit, the V-Force 1, can be separated from the guy himself. And despite the name, no, he's not supposed to be Victory Gundam because he came out well before the show was aired. And here the book gets a little weird again, with Alex in his Earth armor, but this looks kind of bad, right? That's because this isn't a BB Senshi kit. Now not to say BB Senshi kits look stellar right out of the box, but it's not this primitive. This is likely a candy toy product of some kind that the magazine people just happen to have around, so they just tossed it into photo shoot to show you guys here. I mean again, it's very charming how laissez-faire of an approach they had towards making this book. Okay, so here we have a proper BB Senshi kit with the brother of Phoenix Gundam, the Rai Gundam, who has the thunder armor. So they make up a really cool trio of matching armor with different elements and different colors. And many kids of the day really wanted to get all three of them. And even though they look similar, they aren't actually remodes of one another, they don't reuse parts. My, how times have changed you Bandai. Last up for the Musha, we have the Ryu Gundam, or Dragon Gundam, who Alex meets in the past timeline. I think this is also a kit they just happened to have painted, so they showed him off right here with a two-page spread. No, he's not really related much to the story here. The next chapter brings us to the Knight's World of SD Gundam Gaiden, with Knight Gundam here first coming up against the Fighter Zaku. But the thing is, the BB Senshi line never had a Fighter Zaku. What you're looking at here is a candy toy product from around the late 1980s, and this book just shows it right here and never tells you what it is. It's quite amazing that Bandai actually still has a page on their modern site with info on this product. But we can have an even better look at what we get inside the box. It's not that colorful, sure, and he's blue for some reason, but I'm sure I still would have enjoyed this as a kid. Knight Gundam's journey has him fighting Knight Sazabi next, and this time this is a BB Senshi kit. He is handily defeated with Knight Gundam's center cross form and that opens up the road to the palace of Satan Gundam, who uses his evil crown to transform into Black Dragon. Don't think too much about the names, they probably just went with whatever sounded cool. This guy here, he has nothing to do with any dragons at all. Knight Gundam powers up too with the power of the ancient stone tablet that turns him into the full armor Knight Gundam, which helps him emerge victorious. Now, if you feel this part seems a little thin compared to the first Musha story with its huge cast, you're not mistaken. BB Senshi only had these three kits if we're only talking about this particular story, and the line has always focused heavily on Musha over all the other themes. For the kits rundown, we first get the Knight Gundam, which we just saw along with his full armor form. It's a little bit odd, but they're actually separate kits that you can buy, but if you buy the full armor one, it gives you the base Knight Gundam, this whole thing right here. And down here we have his still later form as the Versal Knight Gundam. And guess what, they did the same thing right here. And you get the full armor form and the base form, making this an insane deal, but also making the other two kits really obsolete. 
On the next page here, we have the other two members of his party. The fighter gun cannon along with his evil possessed form and the cleric gun tank. I'm not entirely sure where these come from because they aren't model kits. From the looks of it, they are probably resin kits, and much like a lot of things in this book, it just irresponsibly shows you cool stuff and they never tell you what they are. I think this is likely because the people making this book just lifted these photos so they themselves actually have no idea what these products are. Down here, we get a scene from a story after the defeat of Black Dragon, where Night Gundam travels to a far off land to fight the rampaging Psycho Golem. And for this, we need to visit our Japanese friend once more and have a look at the product in question. This is the same candy toy line as the Fighter Zaku, and Psycho Golem here was released in the second wave, and man, I want this as well. Next up, we have the Satan Gundam and his Black Dragon form, which we previously saw. And actually, I have this kit, so we can have a quick look at it right here. So here's the box. And here's him outside the box without any stickers. He's not actually that rare because Bandai reprints these all the time and that's why I have one. And down here we have Knight Zazabi and his Griffin Support Beast, which is something original in this BB Senshi kit. And this has worked its way back into all the later artwork that features Knight Zazabi. And here we get these big photos so we know we're back to the book's original work. This time it's really nicely done with a custom made felt cape. Here we see full armor knights standing next to another much bigger version, and believe it or not, this too is a BB Senshi kit. Released in 1990 for a price of 2,200 yen, the DX Versal Knight Gundam is the rare premium product in the line that's the polar opposite of BB Senshi's usual ultra budget target. The next two pages are given entirely to this guy right here, who is the Knight Gundam F90. He comes from the much later story based on Arthurian legend with the Knights of the Round Table. Again, this is kind of charming how they let you see the little painting imperfections on the kit that's supposed to be really small, and I really like that as a kid. Next, we have the main character of that story, the Crown Knight Gundam, but this is some pimped up Hobby Japan build thing or something, because the BB Senshi kit looks like this. And no, this didn't fool me either when I was small. I could tell this was done by a skilled modeler. Now this next page we really have to talk about. The four characters here are the Argus Knights who fought alongside Versal Knight Gundam. Knight Zeta here really did come with all this stuff in his BB Senshi kit with his horse Argama and the magic shield, though just one and not two of them. And that's all well and good, but here we have Fighter Double Zeta, Knight Alex, and then Mage Nu. What you're looking at here are the unreleased prototypes of these three characters for the BB Senshi line. Japanese fans saw this exact photos a few times printed in books and ads, but that was it. Afterwards, they were never heard from again. And even rarer is his backside look at the prototypes. And no, the book doesn't tell you about any of this. I mean, shocking, I know. So that wraps up the night portion, where we're gonna move on to what the book calls Mormal, with an M, SD and MSD, which I think they mean MSV. What they mean is, this is all the UC stuff, and this section is a wild collection of oddities. First of all, we get the F91 and the F90, so nothing wrong here. They're both proper BB Senshi releases. But down below, we have the full armor Gundam Mark III, which looks entirely like a BB Senshi kit from the way it's built, but there's no such product. And actually, I still don't know what this is. Maybe it's a one-off custom build, or maybe it's a resin kit. In the background, we have the Ganso SD Gundam lines as white base, which is a really cute product and it looks really nice with most SD UC kits. On this page right here, we have a look at the F91 kit in more detail with this removable faceplate and everything. But eagle eyed young me noticed that this one down here was labeled cryptically as the old version. But I didn't know about any old version of the F91 kit, there was just that retail one up above. This here is in fact the ultra rare BB Senshi F91 Ticket Special. And it gets that name because you only got this kit if you purchased a special pre-sale movie ticket to go see F91 in theater when it premiered. Sure, you might think, big deal, Bandai has stuff like this up the wazoo nowadays with clear variants and all that, but get this, this is an entirely different mold from the retail kit. Parts of it were updated into the final retail release like adding a peg to the arm, but the torso is entirely different. 
The ticket special is one of the holy grails of BB Senshi collecting in Japan, and here in the book it's just casually plopped down right here. I mean, maybe because at the time it wasn't such an old and rare kit yet. And next we have the Gundam Unit 4 and Unit 5, both of which are not BB Senshi releases. They look pretty nice though, right? I actually had these when I was small, so I can tell you exactly what they are. These right here are actually Gashapon toys, and they're from a line called SD Gundam Deluxe. Now, even with a web crawl, all I'm able to show you is the leaflet that comes inside the capsule. But you can see here Unit 4 and Unit 5 shown in the lineup along with all the others. The actual lineup has just 4 mini model kits that you can get, because the twist here is that they come with parts to make a variant. So, Unit 4 has all the parts you need for Unit 5, and Hyakushiki here has all the parts for Hyakushiki Kai, and normal Gundam can be turned into his awesome ninja form. Uh, Gunlander here, he drew the short straw and he does not have an alternate form. Poor guy. And while we're here, I thought I'd show you this other one I found during my research. This is from the third release of the series and the last one they made. And here we have the Gym Command, which I probably would have really wanted the most myself. But here we also get the Gym Cold District, which you can recognize from the unique gun that it has. Bandai used to put out some really awesome products like this during the SD boom, so hopefully you can get a taste of how great it was for fans at the time. Okay, so back to the book. We have the Hyakushiki down here, which you might think, oh, so this must be the one we saw from the SD Gundam Deluxe a little earlier. And well, no, it isn't. That one looks like this. It's super cute, and I bet a lot of you would want this. But if we put them side by side, we can tell they aren't the same thing. There was no BB Senshi kit of this, and I don't know what it is. Next, we get a closer look at that mysterious Gundam Mark III, and we can see it from the front and the back and everything. And you might think, oh, well then this is from the SD Gundam Deluxe line, isn't it? Nope, they never had him in the series altogether. Now, I want to be clear, this isn't some tinfoil hat cryptozoology thing I'm trying to paint here. Bandai put out a lot of SD Gundam products, and there's a lot of them that aren't very well documented. So these products could be any number of things, I just don't happen to know what they are. And down here, we have a different Gundam Mark III, with some info for a change. It says that this is from the DDC series, which actually refers to Bandai's B-Club Resin Kits' Design D-Form Collection line. And thanks to Japanese documentarians, sure enough, we have the Mark III right here, which the site's author mentions is split up similarly to a BB Senshi kit, and the size is made to match those kits nicely. So clearly they meant for you to have this displayed together with them. But yeah, I mean, what a deep rabbit hole this hull is, huh? And lastly, we have the BB Senshi F90, and it couldn't have been easy to paint all those details on it. It's a really nice build, though it's not quite as mysterious as all the other things we've seen. And now we're at the real mobile suit section of this book with all the full proportion kits. We can go a little faster here since most of you watching this may have seen these here and there. And just like the cover tells us, we have the F91 kits here, starting with the F91 itself. And we can see the model line's main selling point, clear plastic parts. Next, we have a really nicely painted G cannon, and then a slightly white Vigi Nagina. And just after that, we see it once again in full silver. This is this box's own build, and I think they did a pretty good job with this one, even though they love the shoulder slumping like that for some reason. Then, their own builds continue with the Doggy Iris in the brown color after Anna Marie defected over to the Earth Federation. This paint job here isn't quite as nice, and you can see the bits of paint on the head camera that's outside the lines, and the brown paint doesn't entirely cover the green plastic of the kit, and like I said, it's charming. Then next, we get the Doggy Iris again in the original green looking much better here because this is a, an official photo. And then we have the Burga Giros, which judging from the grainy photos, they were lifted from some other magazine. We get more plagiarized photos with the Denon Zan, and then the Gun Tank R44, which I will tell you every time we see this, this is one of the best kits from that era. It just really is. Then we get the Denon Zan once again with much cleaner photos, so we know these are original builds. These look okay, I don't see anything wrong with them. And because they had access to the kits, we get way more photos of all these original builds than the other photos that they lifted off other places. Then, we get their own build of the heavy gun standing in some plastic grass which makes me think of Easter. 
It's paired with their build of the G Cannon, which is not as detailed and as clean as the one we saw earlier, but I think it's still one of their better builds compared to some of the others we've seen so far. And then, out of nowhere, we get the F-90 and its A, D, and S mission packs. These are all official Bandai photos, so let's jump ahead and see the books' own attempt at it. And I guess it's not bad. Really, they continue to use stickers when they can, like on the shield, and the edges aren't that clean, so they probably hand-painted a lot of the kits, and that mint green background is a little bit of an odd choice, but you know, it's a good effort. 7 out of 10. Then we go into Bizarre Town with Ryujin Maru here from Mashine Yuden Wataru, but in full proportion. Uh, Ryujin Maru is this guy right here, and he is an SD. This is what he looks like by default. The one here is the very rare Sword Master Ryujin Maru kit. No, really, this line of kit is the stuff of legends. Like this one here going for 2,500 Hong Kong dollars, which is 321 US dollars plus a bit more as of this video. Ouch. I think of all the builds that are done by the people who made this book, this one is the very best, with the radical change to a black base color to highlight the beautifully painted golden trim all around. It's just a very nicely painted build. I mean, imperfections aside, this must have taken a ton of work. Hey everyone, a quick cut in from the editing room. Turns out I was a bit wrong in that part just now, and there is a black gold color variant here called the Dark Master Ryujin Maru, so the paint job isn't as radical as I thought it was. Okay, back to the video. And we're nearing the end here with some promo photos of Bandai's newest and greatest high grade line. We see the very first kit here to ever bear the high grade badge, the RX-78. We've seen him briefly in the Gundam Shop CD, go watch that if you haven't already. And we get the HG Zeta Gundam with its wave shooter equipment. And then we get the Gundam Mark II who is compatible with the older non-grade 1144G Defensor. But then we don't get the fourth kit, the Double Zeta, which leads me to think that this book was published before that kit was released later in that year in July 1991. And lastly, out of nowhere, we get the non-grade 1144 Gundam GP01. They probably didn't know where to put this so they kind of stuck this right here, but some poor guy went through the trouble of painting this up so they didn't want their buddy's work to go unseen. So here we are, 30 years later, looking at the fruits of his labor. Nice job, Anonymous guy. And with that, we've gone through the entire book. It always felt bittersweet to me as a kid whenever I reached the end of this book because it always felt too quick. Through no intentional design, this book was really cryptic with his information. And it told me here that there was such a wide world of awesome Gundam things to buy and see. And I hope this book has given you some idea of what the SD Gundam boom was like in the 1990s. I know I've said this before, but it always pains me to see when SD Gundam is quickly dismissed by English speaking fans and YouTubers. But of course I understand because that's mostly because the SD Gundam boom was outside of North America for its entire lifetime. I don't think it'll come again both in Japan or anywhere else, so the next best thing is to take a time machine back for a little bit like this. Of course, if you ever feel a little bittersweet too like young me, come watch this video again from time to time like I would when I'd flip through the book every so often. Thank you so much for watching. Come look us up on social media with updates on upcoming videos and sneak peeks at future projects. Links are in the description below. Or hang out here some more with one of these other videos. But before you go, don't forget to like, subscribe, and hit the bell icon to be notified of new videos from Hobby Clubhouse, and I'll see you next time.